today we're going to focus on our uh, business college here. It's uh, the Faculty of Management is our largest faculty at the university. We've got lots of different majors within the faculty. And um, we have some guest speakers today. Um, first, let me introduce my coworker Ahmed, a fellow student enrollment advisor. Hello, Greta, how are you? I'm excellent. Ahmed, how are you? Oh, good, oh, good, thank you. Good. Um, we have two professors with us today. We have Dr. Steven, who teaches operations and supply chain management. Hello, doctor. Hello, Rena. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Great, great. Good. And we also have Dr. Quay with us today. He is the uh, a professor of the finance and accounting um, program. Doctor, how are you? Hello, uh, Greta. I'm fine. Thanks. Yeah. Great. Thank you so for much you. for. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, today is really exciting. We have a current student as well as an alumnus. Um, Maya is our alum. She actually works in the same department as Ahmed and I. How are you doing, Maya? How's the the day off? <laughs> Hello. I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm so excited to share both experiences today. Yes, yes. that's what we're looking for. Yes. And Mashari is a current student who's also helping us out here in the recruitment. How are you doing? Thank you. Can you speak up? Where are you? <laughs> My voice is not coming. Okay. I'm saying no. that Thank you. There we go. Awesome. Thank you guys um, for joining us today. Hopefully this will be a really exciting and informative um, faculty and in focus that we're going to post on YouTube. Um, so for those of you who are watching this afterwards, um, you can contact us uh, via the website, phone, email, WhatsApp, whatever. Um, for those of you who have joined us live today, congratulations, you're the special ones. <laughs> Joking. Um, but today you're going to be able to ask us questions live in the chat box here. And um, we'll probably address them towards the end of the program. Ahmed, do you have anything to add before we get started? Uh, no, all good. I'm just actually excited about uh, today's event. Uh, I have so many questions uh, to Dr. Steve, to Kiwa, especially to Mashari and Maya. Uh, I, I'm working with Maya and Mashari like closely. I know them as like colleagues, but I haven't talked much to them about their experience as a student. So that's exciting. <laughs> so I'm looking well, we forward get... to that. Yeah, me too. We get so many students um, who are looking to get a business degree and we have so many great degrees to offer. Um, and to be honest, one of our most popular ones is the accounting and finance one. So um, Dr. Quay, I'm really glad that you were able to join us today. Um, and Dr. Steven, I don't know anything about operations and supply chain management. And I've been hearing about this since 2013. So I'm really glad that I'm finally gonna get to learn about it today with you here. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question for you off the bat, Dr. Steven. Um, just a little icebreaker question. Um, what was your vision, or sorry, if you could go back in time and like choose a different profession, would you, and what would it be? Oh, um, no, I don't think I would actually, because uh, I've always kind of been a fan of education and um so i think i'd go back and i would do the same actually um that's kind of uh <laughs> I, you know I, I i went into school i never wanted to leave school and now i'm living that dream i guess but what's also nice is that i get to also connect to you know the professional side as well but i get to still stay in my little bubble when i want to uh as a professor as well so um yeah. it's a pretty simple answer i guess from me on that one no thank you thank you so much i feel like uh, a lot of people know that they want to be a teacher early on um and they want to stay in academia so that's wow. awesome very cool it's it's really nice to know that we have professors who are very passionate about what they do and they know that they're in the right spot um dr quay i have a question for you are you ready anytime so i'm wondering i'm so bad at math I'm wondering if there are any like very important skills that um, you know students who are interested in doing accounting and finance need to have, or is there like a certain type of person that absolutely should not do accounting and finance? Well, to to me personally, these mathematics 
may not be linked to accounting very closely. Really? But if you know the concepts of accounting, then you're gonna do great. Uh, for example, one plus one, what is the answer? Two. Two. Uh, from accounting perspective, it can be 11. Wow. So <laughs> do you need math for that? Maybe not, is it? You're gonna be creative, innovative, and see how you can apply things into also life for that purpose. Having said that, uh, one plus one could mean the synergy between two companies. So when we look at numbers, uh, not necessarily it must be one plus one equal to two. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's actually like kind of relieving for me somehow because for some reason I have this stereotype that like people who go into accounting must be really interested in math or must be really into crunching numbers. So it seems a lot deeper than that. And I think that that might actually be relieving for some of our viewers today as well. Um, so thank you for that little bit of relief. <laughs> Ahmed, would you like to ask our alum and uh, current student any questions now or do you wanna wait? Can you turn on your microphone? No, I still can't hear you. No. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. So no, I'll wait for some time. Okay. We can kick off during the the event or during the Q&A maybe. All right, cool. I like that idea. Okay. Um, Dr. Steven has um, created some slides for us and a little presentation. Um, so if you're able to, would you please share your screen and uh, tell us a little bit about your program? Sure. Um, I should also mention that I did not create these slides. This is the uh, collective <laughs> effort of the different faculty who all well, sent me different ideas. So you put I just want to give credit, just giving credit where credit is due before we, uh, <laughs> before I use them. Awesome. Uh, also, if you don't like them, then it's not my fault. So it's great. Yeah, either <laughs> way. <laughs> uh, but no, they're pretty basic. Just uh, trying to give you a rundown of the programs and, um, you know, uh, who we are. And, um, you know, what, what sort of uh, areas you might be interested in, hopefully you can, you can see from this. Uh, so anyway, we have both bachelors and MBA and also one master's uh, program as well outside of MBA. Um, I think mostly students are here looking at the undergraduates. So uh, we have the basics that uh, generally you would find at any business school, like accounting and finance, um, you know, Dr. Quay is here with that one. Uh, human resource management, marketing, you know, these are ones that we see all the time. But um, something that really, I think, uh, distinguishes us a little more is that we have these sort of growth sector programs. Well, you know, areas that are on the fringe or, or uh, becoming, you know, big um, uh, areas for employment in the future as well, especially based in the UAE and particularly in Dubai, we have things such as uh, tourism, events and tourism management, which is obviously a big deal for where we're living right here. Um, E-business, of course, you know, everything is being done now. obviously through the pandemic, we're seeing this uh, growing even more exponentially. Um, forensic accounting, uh, maybe Dr. Quay can tell us more about that one later. I'm not exactly uh, sure everything about that, but, um, you know, international business sports management, that's a new one that just uh, came in the last uh, few years or so, along with operations and supply chain that I'm a part of. And, um, of course, there's a lot of shopping, a lot of uh, uh, high-end um, experiences you can have in Dubai. So luxury you know, marketing is another, I think, uh, really important area for this region. Um, so I think this is something that really distinguishes us is that when we see that there's something that could really be of use to students in the region, then try to grow and develop that uh, program to help meet that need uh, for them. So yeah, this is just a rundown of the basic programs. Um, let's see, and if you chose to move on to graduate uh, degree, you could also uh, continue at CUD. 
and you can get certain concentrations in finance, general management, human resource management, marketing. Again, kind of the, the you know, the main kind of core programs that you might see. And you can also do more than one concentration at once if you want to combine, uh, you know, two together. And then uh, finally, we have a, this other kind of emerging sort of program in master in information technology management and governance. So that's supposed to uh, kind of combine the idea of, um, you know, business with technology, essentially, um, which again, in this region is kind of, you know, uh, an important um, area to be going into. So those are the basics of the program. Um, who's going to teach you? Well, we try to get people from all over the place so that you get a good uh, overall experience of the world, essentially in one place, uh, which is I think is nice. And Dr. Quay is in one of the most uh, diverse uh, programs himself. Yeah, uh, we have people in his program from USA, Australia, France, it's from Malaysia. South Africa, UK, you can't uh, you can't really mix it up any more than that, I don't think, uh, in this case. So you're not going to get bored, I don't think, uh, with your professors <laughs> in particular here. You're going to get uh, a different perspective uh, from each one of them. But maybe you can talk more on that too. <laughs> um, looking more specifically, like getting to know a couple of professors who are around here. Um, we have uh, Dr. Farouk here. He's in marketing, and he's kind of interesting because he has this, uh, you know, kind of emerging field of research that he's into, which is uh, marketing, spiritual tourism, uh, which again kind of it overlaps with some of the other things that we have in the in the school. I said we have a program in events and tourism management, and he works along beside them, even though he's not in their department. So. You know, we try to um, make these sort of connections with each other here. Um, he's also, you know, very prominent in his field. He's on editorial boards for journals um, in his field and also has, uh, you know, work experience as well, uh, being a project manager, marketing manager, retail manager, training manager. So, you know, we try to have this sort of background where we have connections to the real world as well as uh, to academic life, of course, as well. Um, Nora, Nora's been here for quite some time um, as well, and she has a lot of great experience too. You know, she's licensed to practice for the Supreme Court, which you can't really get any higher than that, considering that she's American. <laughs> That's the highest court you can can be a part of. Uh, and then um, also, you know, she's managed her own law firm at her own law office and everything. So, you know, she's definitely someone that can tell you not just from what she reads, but what she does, which is always a good um, combination there. All right, so um, just give an idea of uh, some of the programs here. Um, we have marketing, of course, we're looking at before with uh, Dr. Farouk. Um, so at this one, if you're doing undergrad, generally you kind of get more of the basics, right? You, you look more at the marketing theory, the concepts, stuff like that. Um, some applications involved as well. Um, and then when you get, if you go into the MBA level, then it usually get more into the uh, uh, application and maybe less of the theory, assuming that you kind of pick that up uh, more quickly. All right. International business, again, because of where we are, we have a lot of trade that goes on and a lot of business that goes on from around the world that's happening within uh, Dubai. Speaking from operations and supply chain perspective as well, we have one of the biggest and uh, most efficient ports in the world as well, which again, kind of ties hand in hand along with this international business. Um, I get a lot of students who are taking a course from me when teaching next semester global supply chain management, um, which directly brings in tons of uh, students in international business to try to get the uh, uh, the ideas of what sort of challenges exist when you're trying to move things around the world, uh, you know, one side of the world to the other, essentially, right? 
Um, so yeah, so this is a, a very complex sort of program as well because of this, uh, the complexities that go along with trying to work with people and move things around the whole world, essentially. All right. Then I was talking about before e-business. Um, this one again helps tie in to other areas such as international business because you know when you're trying to deal with people around the world, trying to move things from one part of the world to the other, make connections, make uh, uh, partnerships. Um, this is something that definitely aids in our ability to do that, of course. So this one you're looking at, you know, the different strategies that exist and and the technologies that you have to use, how can you, uh, you know, develop a web presence for your, for your business, um, all those sort of things uh, come into play here uh, when we're studying this program. Um, something else that should probably discuss as well is that, uh, you know, Dr. Quay here, he's part of a, a program that has some very good uh, certifications and affiliations. Um, we have something called the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, and here a Chartered Financial Analyst, um, you know, Institute to University Affiliation Program. And uh, maybe it could it might be a good idea for him to talk a little bit more about this if he if he'd like to. Dr. Uh, yeah, I would need to share my screen to, if I can. Oh. Sure. Oh, I think I need to unshare mine and then you can yeah. share yours. Yep. <laughs> now you can try. Yep. Thank you. Well, uh, now what you're seeing is my uh, Google Chrome. So we have these uh, ACCA at uh, CUD. Uh, now, uh, upon your graduation, you're going to get uh, seven uh, paper exemptions from uh, ACCA. So uh, all together, you, you need to get uh, nine papers, but you get seven exemptions. And then when you move on to the professional uh, papers, which uh, you, you need to do four out of these, uh, uh, these two are must, and then you can choose two from these. Uh, for professional papers, these are compulsory. So for the, uh, I would say, the elementary or the preparatory uh, courses, uh, we have the seven exemptions, which you can view from our uh, website as well. Even if you go to the ACCA uh, website, uh, let's say you're going to uh, graduate by 20, let's say 2025. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> uh, our uh, please. Letter, letter from the ACCA would tell us uh, the. May I ask course. a question while it's loading? Uh, you know, you're about to join us. Then once you join, you'll be loaded. Okay. Uh, we are waiting for that confirmation. Once can I? Uh, yes. Do, do, can I ask easy. something, uh, Doctor Kui, uh, while it's loading? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so I I am receiving a couple of inquiries from the the new students asking about whether they should actually go for the ACCA certificate or should they start their bachelor. Um, we we always have this confusion, and honestly, I I I, I don't have a clear understanding um, about the ACCA itself in a sense of that. What is the um, the position of the ACCA certificate in the in the market? So, if you if you if there is a student asking you personally, would he, would it be better to go for a bachelor in accounting and finance, or should he go to study only the ACCA certification? What do you recommend? Well, uh, th this is a common question that I I normally receive, you know. So if I were uh, you, I'm going to come to uh, CUD and at the same time, I'm looking to get my ACCA. At this moment, uh, what I can share is uh, we might be uh, getting our ACCA Accelerate uh, program, hopefully soon. Uh, with that said, while you are doing your degree at CUD, 
you can also at the same time do your ACCA. Uh, this would be a good path while you get your degree and also your professional qualification in ACCA, right? Uh, that is one. Uh, so secondly, if you come to university uh, versus you just take uh, exams, exam after exams on ACCA, you, you, you tr transform into a, a totally better, much better uh, person. Because at university, we have um, all sorts of great uh, activities. You're not just learning all about ACCA. We have operation management, you see. We have management science uh, from Dr. Sivan, uh, for example. So the, the focus will be diverse. While you're probably, you're not sure what you want 10 years from now. You may, five years later, you may say, I want to be in uh, finance. Then uh, pretty fine. Yeah? Our program is also accepted into this uh, CFA. Meaning to say, our program is, uh, the, the courses are in line with CFA, preparing you for the uh, CFA exams later on. See? So uh, that is also what you will benefit from um, coming to this uh, CUD, right? So to answer that, uh, my own personal uh, preference is I'm going to come to get my uh, degree while also working hard for my ACCA or also, yeah, also uh, my CIMA. See? At CUD, we have the maximum possible exemptions given uh, by CIMA. This is perhaps if you are aware and as you have known, it is more towards the uh, management uh, accounting side. So you have many options wide open uh, awaiting you for the great future so dr steven uh, i will pass the baton back to you uh, but uh, ahmad did i answer you the question that if you have further questions feel free thank to you so me. much thank you dr kyo all good all right let's see all right so uh yeah go back to screen here all right so thank you dr quay this you helped me out immensely there since i am not aware of, <laughs> of this uh, as you are for sure um uh, so something else that uh want to discuss here is you know uh, how will you spend the next four years while you're here um so just like any education you're gonna have uh you know some classroom uh, instruction, of course. Um, hopefully, we challenge you with some nice applied projects. I don't know any professor that doesn't have you um, go out there and try to apply what you learn um, to some sort of, uh, you know, something beyond just a normal assignment, essentially. Um, in the past, you know, if I, depending on the type of course I'm teaching, it's going to, you know, have an effect on what sort of project you're going to have, of course, uh, in in operations and supply chain, we care about uh, simulating the real world sometimes. Um, so you try to get data on, on how some operation works. For instance, um, we had a, had a project once from students where they wanted to try to fix the parking situation at the university. Uh, so they thought there wasn't enough parking spaces and, and people are you know getting turned away and so forth. So what I had them do is try to simulate the parking lot environment and see exactly where the bottlenecks are, where are things getting uh, all messed up, try to come up with a solution for it, and then try to simulate it um, through the, um, you know, through a, a particular software that's uh, used for this uh, sort of purpose. And then they could uh, present their findings and their suggestions to the university. And whether the university takes it or not is up to them, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the way it goes. Um, so anyway, and of course we use an online you know platform to help manage um, classes and so forth. And we're using WebEx you know to 
deliver the classes currently, but hopefully we'll be back in the classroom uh, soon, as everybody hopes, of course. Um, oh, should probably mention that you know we are accredited by the UAE Education Ministry, as we should be. Um, and of course, we have the Canadian curriculum uh, that's recognized um, overseas, so that it is possible to transfer or to continue or to go to another program like an MBA or a master's or something after you've um, you've uh, you know finished your degree at uh, Canadian University. Um, yeah, for jobs, you know, we have students doing jobs here, doing jobs abroad. Um, starting their own business. I know several students who start their own business while they're going to school at uh, CUD. And, you know, I try to encourage that for sure. You know, try to already have some experience going on at the same time as while you're doing your uh, education. You can already start applying what you're learning uh, personally. And I have students who do projects that are based on their own company, trying to further improve their own um their own company that they're a part of so you know this is all uh great things to see coming from students here um something that we try to encourage too is that you know if you want to have a full experience abroad as well and uh, with your education you can do a couple of years here and then and then move on to canada and finish your degree at uh, particular partner universities um, and I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, we have this Canadian curriculum here. You might be wondering what's different between like Canadian and, uh, you know, like the UK or something like that in general, right? This is a common question that might come up. And one of the easiest ways to answer it, I guess, uh, generally speaking, is that with the UK education based education, um, you'll probably be more focused in your particular uh, major that you have chosen, where usually in the North American and Canadian um, education style, you'll get more diverse background of knowledge that, you know, as I think uh, Dr. Quay was kind of mentioning as well before, you say, and, you know, students in his program will be taking management science sort of a curriculum as well. So they're kind of getting a, you know, a more diverse uh, range of skills, I guess, coming out in knowledge, coming out of a uh, of North American style sort of education, um, which as you know, like what you're doing today may not be what you're going to be doing tomorrow in the sort of, you know, job environment that we're in now, you know, people are changing directions all the time. So I, I think the more diverse background that you get, I think that's more beneficial for you personally uh, speaking. Yeah. All right. Um, so, as I was saying before, you know, we are called Canadian University for for a reason. Uh, around 80% of the program at, at, in the Faculty of Management is similar to these other universities that are abroad, uh, particularly in Canada, of course. And we have transfer agreements with, you know, several Canadian universities. We have a whole list of them. Um, as far as career opportunities go, you know, depending on the major, of course, there's different areas that you can uh, get into. Um, just showing a list here for marketing, uh, for those who are interested in marketing. Um, but uh, the marketing program likes to also mention that, you know, Knowledge is never enough alone, you know, experience also needs to come into play. So um, you need to be kind of try to expose yourself to all different areas uh, within the field that you're interested in, essentially. Um, and part of the program as well is you have to do an internship and, you know, it, towards the end of your, uh, your time at CUD. Uh, so you're definitely forced into getting real world experience as well, which shouldn't be forced, of course, he should want to do this. Um, uh, but you are also encouraged to do that outside as well. You know, you don't have, you can also do internships in the summer if you want. Uh, you can also take 
courses in the summer. It's very flexible as far as how you want to, uh, you know, do your program personally. Um, and uh, just to show a different uh, program with different career opportunities as well, uh, e-business. So there's some that overlap here again with like operations and supply chain. You see one here, uh, enterprise resource planning specialist. So this is the uh, the software systems that you generally use to manage your information, you know, conduct transfers of information of uh, of money and all that stuff with um, uh, with your supply chain partners and so forth. Um, but of course, there's other ones that are exciting, like social media analyst. Uh, you know, if you're into data, if you're into number crunching, business data analyst, things like that. Um, Anyway, so I think the last thing I just wanted to show before we get more in the Q&A here is um, if you go to the website uh, and you look up whatever program you're looking for here, you can get a little more detail about how your career will look like here at uh, 3AD. So since I'm in operations and supply chain, I'll show that one. Yeah. You can click around and see, you know, course descriptions. This is course descriptions for everything. <laughs> you can check that out. Um, we also have the study plan. This is probably the one that you'd want to really take a look at closely uh, about what you might be taking in your first semester, second semester, and so forth. Generally, in the first couple of years, you're going to have a diverse uh, range of courses that you're taking that aren't all connected or not not uh, you know directly connected to your major per se um, that kind of comes in more towards the end of the second year into the third year particularly for operations yeah you see the first course directly related to the major is in the fourth semester the second half of the second year and then you start taking more of the courses that are uh, specific to the major um, yeah so anyway, you can look around on the website and you see all the requirements, how many credit hours you need and, and everything here as well, and the specific courses that you would all be taking within the major um, and the electives that are available that you have to take uh, some of as well here. So um, yeah, that's about all I have, I think, for talking about i just want to simplify one thing for the students uh because i'm pretty sure that they still not aware of how the classes work how do they how do the university give them courses each semester so just a general idea for you guys is that uh it's like basically think of it as school we have a total of almost 41 courses for the major especially in the business so for you to finish in four years you're supposed to take every semester, which is four months, you should take at least five courses. So if you follow a study plan of five courses in each semester, you can finish in four years. And uh, that, that's it's basically because the professor is telling you that there are electives and there is there are some subjects like that. So just put that in mind. So this is how the university works. It's like every semester, there are five based courses in each semester. But how is the load of this, uh, Mashari, if I may ask, is the five courses a lot or this is something that uh, a freshman would be handling? Um, basically, for someone who's not uh, used to the university life, the first semester might be a bit tricky, might be a bit complicated, but by time the student will realize that the courses are not that difficult. It's actually very simple because in the first semester, anyways, they will have very simple courses, very general courses to help them uh, be more aware of the classes and all that. But as, as in the workload, it's, it's not that much. Of course, in the last final year, you will have more difficult courses. I'm not telling you that all the courses are very easy. Of course, you will have many courses which are very complicated and it has a very high load of working in it. But as a general idea, it is uh, quite simple. Ahmed, um, 
I think you had a list of some questions that you specifically wanted to ask our alumni. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I actually wanted to start with uh, Mashari since he started talking about the classes that he <laughs> that the students would be taking. Um, I know you are uh, you, you are studying now uh, international business as a major, and um, honestly, most of the uh, applications that I receive, the students are actually interested to proceed that specific major. Can mm -hmm. you like share with me your experience in that? Like how or why did you choose? Uh, international business so, so, so before going to the major itself just so, so the students know more about this program it actually used to uh, the program was called general management uh, it's it's under the general management but since uh, the new modern facilities we have in the world and how the business is going throughout the years they changed it to international business so the student has more uh, let's say experience on how to do the business not only locally but internationally as well basically the reason i chose international business is that uh, it opens more doors for the student so instead of specializing only in one specific major uh, the student can have a general idea of more than one major at the same time so for example in the international business program instead of let's say let's say a student uh, wants an idea of how uh, wants a general idea of how to do accounting and finance, let's say. And at the same time, they want to have more information about marketing, international marketing and stuff like that. So uh, to give them the option of having the courses together at the same time, they created the international business program where the student can have a general idea of accounting, HR, uh, marketing, uh, events and tourism, supply chain management. So the, the, the student has more options in front of them. So once the student graduates uh, from the university, uh, they have more opportunities and more doors open for them. So I, 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 I went to this specific program because as, as I told you again, it gives me the, uh, the more of the, the opportunities to study more than one program at the same time. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Thank you, Mashari. Um, can I continue the questions or? Yes, fine, sure. yeah? All right, perfect. Um, so I wanted to, to ask you also, like, what is what is like to be in the classroom? Um, like how many people there? We always also get these questions. Well, I'm not in the class. Like I can as much as I can talk, but I will not be able to to paint that picture in front of exactly. the new students. So you are in it. How, how, how is it like to be in a classroom? How is your experience? Uh, first of all, um, of course, there will be a difference where you finish high school and then you directly go to a university. Of course, the university li life is way different than school. And the, the feeling that you get is that, okay, now you're into something which is more serious, which is something very helpful for your life and for your career. So once you step into the class and uh, basically, and one thing good about the university is that the classes are not that it's not like the fancy classes that you see in the movies where the hall is like uh, it's for like 300 400 students it's it's very simple it's like for around 30 to 40 students per class so the student can have a better experience with the professor so when a professor is explaining something the the student will have the the, the information the professor is giving them better instead of like they're saying in a they're sitting in a huge classroom where it's difficult to interact with the professor so what i experience is that Throughout my years, uh, the, the, the the what's called the interaction between me and this the professor and the students is very flexible and very easy, which uh, makes it uh, more comfortable for me to study in a classroom. And uh, basically, yeah, it's 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 a good experience for uh, for my students. All right, that's that's great to hear, actually. And Thank especially you. especially yeah. we opened the city walk. Oh, yeah. And most of the students who uh, are live with us right now, if you have seen the campus, we have upgraded our classes and we have added new facilities for students. So me, myself as a student, I'm very excited to start the classes. So no wonder about the new students. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll be back on campus. Okay. Uh, very Take soon. And yeah. <laughs> um, 
Dr. Stephen and Dr. Kiwi, I also wanted to uh, to to know your opinion about this. How how was the online classes uh, versus the um, the physical one, and is, was there any challenge that you faced uh, during the online uh, teaching? And how do you engage with the students as well? Yeah, at first it was uh, kind of challenging, I guess, because. Uh, we weren't used to doing it before, but um, I don't know. The, what was really helpful was the IT department was uh, is very uh, responsive. So uh, if you have any, if we had any problems like with a test or something like this, we could get immediate uh, help and feedback, and that was really important. Having the support, uh, very supportive uh, staff at the university made things uh, much easier for. Uh, moving to this uh, this environment, I would say. Um, as far as teaching goes, um, yeah, it was also a bit of a, a challenge um, because I, I was used to just going into the classroom and putting everything out there in front of them and uh, and being have the easy interaction with the students and everything. But now we cannot see them all the time. You don't need to have the video on all the time. Uh, some people have technical difficulties with it, even and. Um, so having flexibility was a big, uh, a big part of the, of the process. Um, also, I was finding that I was uh, in some courses where there was maybe some more technical, um, technical, uh, I don't know, content to it, a lot of mathematics or something like that in the course. Um, you had to provide more, um, more resources for this. In some cases, I was doing videos, going over. Um, some of the problem solving and everything, which I think in the end for some students it, it made a better experience for them because uh, they didn't they could go back and review the videos and everything and be able to uh, have further course content I guess um, as a result. So I think uh, depending on the type of course and the type of delivery, uh, the type of content in it, uh, you know, there are adjustments that can be made which are very helpful. Uh, and st some students, you know, and uh, kind of get a mix between what students think about it as well, too. Some students, they really want to get back into the classroom, but then some like the flexibility of being at home in their uh, uh, in their pajamas while they're taking courses. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of interesting to see the mix of, you know, of reactions and uh, preferences. And I'm sure everybody wants to get back to the classroom, but then there'll, there'll be an adjustment to that as well, because. Uh, you, know, you have to drive to the school and everything, but yeah. But it's a beautiful campus, so we need to we need to be there. That's for sure. We need to uh, enjoy the uh, the atmosphere yeah. of being together yeah. again. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Steve. Dr. Kiwa, do you want to add something? Yeah, uh, of course. We are all uh, looking forward to go back uh, to campus. At at the beginning of this pandemic, uh, I I would say that. Teaching online is not challenging because we, I think, in the first week or first few weeks, uh, we have been given online teaching training. So all of our uh, faculty members are trained to teach online, and we got all the supports from our IT uh, department. So everything went on uh, smoothly. Uh, perhaps uh, this could be a challenge for new students yeah. uh, mm -hmm. because they come from this face-to-face -face learning environment that uh, in school you went to meet with your uh, friends. Uh, anyway, let's hope for this to uh, go away very soon. Yes. And, I... uh, it's, 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 yeah. uh, one thing, Professor, uh, for the new students, it won't be that challenging because I think the last year in school was online, so they're aware of how the teaching online goes. Yeah. And since we already adapted to the online learning, so in case worst case scenarios, I hope the classes are online. Uh, I mean, are on, are on campus. But in case if the classes were online, I'm pretty sure the students will be uh, will will easily adapt to the situation that uh, we're in. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, the the online learning is, is is challenging, but I'm pretty sure the university is already ready for it. So that's the, that's the only point I wanted to say. I see, they 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 want to come and walk around city walk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. 
roaming online. Yeah. The area is amazing. We're working now at City Walk for everyone. If, if they want to visit us, please feel free to do so. And uh, also to add, actually, uh, some of our classes now has been designed to adopt the blended education or the blended classes. So uh, sound system, the, the videos would be uh, uh, very compatible for the students who, who are uh, uh, going to go for the online classes. It's not yet. Uh, f finalized with the ministry, of course, but even if the, if a professor is in a class and we have some students taking the classes online, um, the, uh, the setup of, of the, um, of the classroom uh, has been designed to make it very clear for the students online and engaging and they would hear uh, uh, everything properly and uh, they will ha also be involved in any uh, uh, presentation. So it's really cool actually. Uh, we are planning to do kind of like a promo in the future about how this technology work and we're really looking forward to that. Uh, I think it's um, it's it's a new trend now in uh, in in teaching, and we are ready for this. Um, so, hi Maya, how are you? Hello, I'm great. Are you good? I'm excited <laughs> for the students to join. Maya, we're actually. Um, I, I wanted to know your experience. Uh, yeah. I know you were intern here. Um, um, I, I want to know like your development. Uh, uh, among the four years, like from the from the, from the beginning that you started, how how was your first day up until your graduation? Can you like share your experience with us at CUD? Definitely. So I started as a fresh student back in 2015. I registered for the business program and international business as well, just like Mashari. Um, and I started actually like participating in CUD events in 2018, I would say, um, as CUD offers a lot of opportunities for students to help out in different activities and events, such as open houses and exhibitions that we usually do for our student enrollment department. So um, then I got offered an internship uh, with the enrollment department to help, to help out with the new student services. Um, where I started working part time and completing my studies at the same time. So that was um, a really good opportunity where um, you get to meet a lot of people in, in the service, in the admin and in the services departments of the university. And you get to know um, how to deal with different people and different departments and um, how basically other students, what they were there looking for and you get to help them with everything. Um, so that was really great. I did that for about two years um, and I got a lot of experience, which helped me to get a full time position at the university itself. So right now I am helping all the students who are applying and uh, that feels really great because I can share my experience as a student as well with them. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where I am at the moment. <laughs> that's that's great, Maya. Um... Uh, what would you advise the the freshmen? What uh, since the classes are, are about to start, a lot of people they don't know what to do. They would be confused for sure. Um, what would have you done different, or what would you advise them to do? I would um, advise them to relax, uh, even if they are confused and not sure about what, what they're applying for. Um, Usually, as new students, you just get to um, pick a major, whether it's based on what your parents have told you or what you what you have heard or, or what other students are applying for. Um, but that's fine. Even like, let's say, if you applied for one major and you decided to take a different path later on, it's very easy to do that, especially at CUD. CUD is very flexible with those with the students. Um, second thing, we are available to help you and paint all the picture for you um, if you are still confused and not able to decide about which path to take. Um, as, a, as an alumni and as students, we are working at the university and we can share our experiences um, with you, which can help you decide. Um, other than that, I would say enjoy the rest of your break and uh, hope, don't worry if you need any help, we are here for you. 
And I'm gonna I'm gonna add one fun fa fun fact for the students. Actually, when I saw, first started the university, I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. I was very bad at English, and I was very bad at communicating <laughs> with people. I barely spoke English when I started the university. So it's like in the beginning, yes, no matter what, it might be a bit confusing for you. But just put in mind, as a new student, uh, your concentration and your focus should be always in the first two semesters. So the main main semester in the university, once you start, is the first two semesters because they they are the ones where they will decide your future grades and your performance in the future. So for all of the new students, put in mind, just push push yourself one hard push in the first two, uh, two semesters and the rest will be fine. And definitely, I agree. You, yeah, throughout the years when you start studying and even even when we give you the opportunity to uh, join our events and exhibitions and all that, you will uh, increase your soft skills in the university because the university not just they don't just give you the uh, the studies to get the grades and all that. No, at the same time, we offer like hundreds of hundreds of events every single semester for new students. Whether it is it is uh, let's say activities, uh, educational events, and all that. So. We give the student an opportunity to increase their soft skills. So uh, just put that in mind. That's that's great advice, guys. Thank you so much. Um, there are some questions. Because uh, yes. I can see here uh, some questions were uh, were asked to me once I was start, uh, I started talking in the beginning. Yes. So here from Abdullah Alani, you said that may I ask how was your first year in international business? Well, it wasn't good <laughs> because uh, it wasn't it wasn't good because I, I me personally I wasn't ready to join. I didn't have that many information from let's say my personal side. But uh, after this first semester, the university were very very helpful with me because after my second semester, I I immediately started working with the university. Immediately I went to events. I even was with Maya in many events exhibitions. We went to Abu Dhabi. We had. Uh, World Trade Center event, so they actually helped me in a very huge amount to uh, to let's say to fit into the community of the university, where it made my life easier uh, in the first year. Uh, how did I overcome the difficulties? Well, how can I tell you, Randy? Uh, of course, uh, by practicing, by getting your professor's advice, because the professors are there 24 hours. Whether you email them at 1, 1 a.m. at night or 4 a.m., they even reply most of the professors. So they're always there to help you. And especially that we have our own student committee where uh, any student who has, let's say, problems, whether family, whether themselves or in the university itself, we have a special committee where they're always there for you to help you whether you have any questions, problems, and all that. So from that side, we do help. And, That's great. Um, yes. Thank you, Michelle, you very much. I have a question to Dr. Uh, uh, Kiwi here. Um, someone is asking about the the skills like the leadership, kind of like the soft skills for the students who are entering the field of accounting. Uh, how impactful that uh, skill would be, and how they how they develop that skill during their uh, their study. Uh, you know, uh, according to research studies, uh, twenty three percent of the CEOs around the world are having their uh, business background, including accounting and finance. Uh, the top is uh, engineering background. Yeah? So. If you see how important the accounting and finance function is uh, in a company, uh, having a leadership skill would be a plus point for sure. After all, you need to lead a team to manage all the numbers of uh, whatever activities or operations that have been carried out uh, throughout the year or throughout the uh, financial period, right? So. Talking about how to develop uh, all these skill sets, our uh, courses have been designed according to the Canadian uh, way and also the Ministry of Education uh, style that we... You're gonna say, for example, when you do your group project, yeah, 
you you have to work in team so that that is when teamwork uh, got to come in okay. uh, maybe you have a leader among yourself also how do you get your friends to do their work and as the leader how are you going to uh, consolidate everything into one piece of work that is great for your professor to read it is not getting a b c and d put them together and then uh, you submit it right so yeah. throughout this uh, training uh, back to the earlier question also should i just go for my acca or also the, a degree uh, to me personally uh, getting a degree will train me to be a better professional uh, hope that answer the question but feel free yeah. if you have further thank questions. you Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kiwi. I have another question for Dr. Steve. Um, what do you, what would you expect from a first-year student? A question from Abdullah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, personally, this is a question that it's tough for me to answer because I do not actually see first-year students in operations. Uh, if you want to take operation management class, which is the first class you can take in supply chain, uh, an operations major, uh, you actually have to take a bunch of math courses before that, <laughs> uh, particularly. Uh, so normally I don't see them in the, in the in the first year. But I guess if I'm like uh, advising a student, you know, who's new in the major and everything for the first year, um, that's where I could come in with my experience. I guess is um, I tell them to always keep in contact with the advisor for one, personally speaking. Because it's not uncommon that they start, you know, if, if you start taking uh, courses that you just want to take right away, but you don't realize that you have to take a, a certain course as a prerequisite to then enter another course that you want to get into, then they're going to be behind in the schedule that they want to, uh, you know, to, to graduate in. in. So I've had that happen sometimes where a student will come and say, okay, I want to take operations management next semester. And I say, well, did you take this this course and this course and this course? Oh, no, I have not taken that yet. Oh, well, you can't see me for a, like maybe another year now as a result. So it's always good to be proactive and, uh, and make sure that, uh, you know, you're getting as much advice from fellow students as well as your faculty. Um, if there's ever a doubt, you should, you know, like, um, like uh, Mohammed was talking about, uh, we'll answer your question right away. You know, like it's just as simple as an email, and now even WebEx sessions. I have so many. I have way more office hours now with students because it's so easy now. Um, but I think this will continue. I think this is something after the pandemic, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. starts going away, that we'll continue to do this. You know, like this will be an expectation, and it's a good expectation. I think that you can reach out. And, uh, sure. and and make these connections and make sure you're on the right track. Thank you so much, Steve. Greta, do we have a, a room for one last question? Let's see. We already have established I'm like technologically challenged. So if there are questions <laughs> written, yeah. I can't there is, them. Okay, I can ask you this. There is a question that I think you would be the, the one to answer. If um, like what, uh, how do you assist the student if the, they want to transfer to Canada at a later stage? And how do they apply to the business management? That's an awesome question. Um, so as far as our transfer to Canada program goes, um, ideally, we would like you to know, at least have an inkling, you know? Um, so say you're, you just graduated from grade 12, you're applying to the university, and you're going so far as to sign up for your classes. If you even have a fragment of a thought that you might want to go to Canada eventually, tell your academic advisor. Um, our program works in such a way that um, the universities that we're partners with are um, able and willing to accept our credits here. So we want to make sure that when you're sitting down with your advisor and signing up for your classes, that they're only going to sign you up for the classes that are going to transfer to one of our partner universities. All right. Is there anything that anybody would like to add on towards the end here? We're a little bit over time, but that's okay. Um, but we do need to wrap things up here pretty soon. Anybody want to add something before we dip? Uh, perhaps to add on to what Abdullah asked about expectations of first year student, right? 
I, I did receive and welcome uh, some first year students into my courses, even though I, I teach also third and fourth year courses, you see. So uh, to me, the, when, when you want to begin a journey, yeah, you should start with uh, the best you can. Uh, the, I, I always try to uh, implant that discipline, number one. Right. After all, this is what you are going for. Let's say if you're going to Canada, transfer to Canada, and you must set the goal and uh, strive for it. Uh, this is not the time uh, the first year student is going to enjoy this, uh, for the study. But of course, uh, do enjoy uh, the good environment, the study, the classroom at our city walk campus. Wonderful. I think that's absolutely solid advice. Start out strong. Stay disciplined. You know, it only gets more and more difficult, but if you learn the discipline early on, then you're setting yourself up for success. Thank you so much. Anybody else want to add anything before we? Re I uh, think wrap this up? Uh, someone is asking if the classes are going to be online or on campus. Well, basically, uh, Abdullah, we're waiting uh, the confirmation from the Ministry of Education. Uh, of course, most probably the classes will hopefully be on campus. But in worst case scenario, even if it's online, uh, we're ready for it. But just so you know, Abdullah, there is a new, uh, there is a thing that maybe only students who are vaccinated may be allowed to the university. So it's better to be vaccinated to be in the safe side. And other than that, uh, what's called? The classes are most probably 50% of the classes might be online and 50% might be on campus. So that's a possibility as well. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, this has been the web series Faculty in Focus. Um, we do one for every faculty that we have here at CUD. So um, we may have already done a major that you might be interested in watching as well. You can check out, check out our YouTube channel or you can wait for the invite for our upcoming series. All right. Thanks again to everybody for joining. And thank you. For some of us, have a good evening. And for some of us, have a good rest of your day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.